Hello Bitsbury, this is Craig from Bitsbox.co.uk here with another painting tutorial. So in this one I'm going to be painting three different flesh tones for the Arco Flagellants from the um, Adeptus Sororitas Army um, for Warhammer 40k. So yeah, on the back of the box, um, which I do have here, they have um, some different skin tones and they give you some little um, recipes for them, some here, one over here. So I'm going to try these recipes out now. They're not going to... Um, give you exactly what's on the box because obviously these all painted by the heavy metal team they've probably used a lot more colours than just for three or four they have free recipe but I will show you what you can achieve by using the few colours and then we'll add some extras and um, for all the scars and things like that. Um, they, they look quite nice and um, for like a tabletop standard which is what I'm sort of going for with mine. So as always before we begin so I'll give a huge shout out to our patrons um, a big thank you for supporting us on Patreon um, if you want to know what Patreon is all about, there is a link in the description down below. So yeah, let's get straight into painting some Arco Flagellants. Okay, so I've got one of the Arco Flagellants here. I thought I'd use the one with both the arms up in the air. That gives us a good um, view of the skin areas. So yeah. Now I quite like the... Um, there's quite a few different skin tones on the box. And I really like the sort of greeny one. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. I'll be taking the iron rack skin. Thin that over just a little bit of water. Now I'm going over a grey seer primer. If you were going over a black primer, then I would suggest doing a couple or even three thin coats of this. But as I'm going over the grey seer, if you're going over grey seer or white, you should be able to get away with just for one coat. Okay, so next I'm going to take some Ephonian camo shade. I'm going to thin it out with a bit of medium because I don't think we need to use it straight out of the pot. I think that'd be far too strong. And I'm just going to apply it all over, making sure it gets in all the recessed areas. It'll give us a nice shade to the skin. I'll bring the overall colour down a little bit, but that's not too bad. And we're going to obviously brighten it back up with highlights. Okay, so now I'm going to take some of that Witch Flesh. And I've thinned it down a fair bit and I'm just going to sort of layer it over a lot of the high points of the skin. And I'm brushing playing that ball today. So just like so, so you just leave most of the previous steps showing in the recesses, but you're applying a bit more than you would if you were just doing a simple highlights. So pretty much going over most of the raised areas. And that will really brighten us up. And because it's so thin, it won't be a massive jump straight to the Pallid Witch Flesh. So next I'm just going to add some highlights with White Scar. So continuing on with following the colours on the box. Um, so I'm working on two miniatures here, so I think this is the one I've been using for filming. He hasn't just transformed. Um, I'm doing sort of pairs for for these, so I'll have like six by the end of the video with their flesh areas complete. But yeah, just sort of doing little highlights on the raised area. Areas, I should say. So naturally, um, doesn't look a great deal like what's on the box, but that's to be expected because obviously, um, that's not really the way they're painted. The heavy metal team will put a lot more work into them than this, but and the colours are nice if you want to get them just quick and on the table. So 
That's not what highlights like to say. So, the next step, why well, don't tell you on the box, is just to add some colour around all the scars. They have lots of scars. So, that's going to be the next step. So, we're going to take some screamer pink, and I'm going to thin it way, way down to like glaze consistency, basically almost water. And I'm just going to paint it around all the scars. Now, because it's very thin, it should sit quite nicely around them. Pretty much like a wash consistency, but you just want a very small amount on your brush when you do this. And if the colour's not strong enough when it's dried, you can just do another coat. Just build up as much as you want. See, that really brings that scar out. Once it dries, it'll be a little bit more subtle, of course. Yeah, just bring it back around all them little scar areas. And then once I dry, I'm just going to go back in with a white scar and just apply it over them scars. Like so. And then once you've done that, the pale greeny skin is complete. Alrighty, for the next Arco Flagellant, I'm going to be doing a brown skin tone. So I'm going to be taking some Rhinox Hide. So with this scheme, we're starting with the darkest colour and working our way up through layers and highlights. So just apply this all over. I'm just doing a thin coat. Again, going over the light and primer is no problem at all. But if you're going over a black, you may need a couple of thin coats of this. So next up, I'm going to take some Gore 4 Brown. So this is the next colour listed on the box. And I'm going to essentially get it in shot and layer it up. And it's quite thin here, so I'm going to do a couple of coats. Just layering up over most of the skin, just leaving the Rhinox hide in those deepest of recesses. So you just take your time with a step, and this will lighten that skin up, and then give you some nice depth in the shadows. So next up, I'm going to take some Bane Blade Brown, and this is going to be for some highlights. So again, I thinned that out with some water. Now I'm just going to hit like all the most raised muscle areas your toes just run some lines like so because it's thin though that will dry quite subtle to give us a nice little highlight So just continue working around like so. Okay, so next I'm taking some Screamer Pink. And once again, this is going to be for all the little scars and stuff. Such, now this time I haven't thinned it out as much. So I'm going to paint it over the whole scar. And then a little bit around it as well. Because we'll be going back over the scar. 
um, in a little while. So, yeah, I haven't got to be super neat, just enough to make the skin around that area look a little bit pink. Like so. And then next up we're going to take some Raka Flesh. And this is to paint the scars themselves, so with a good tip on your brush, if I can get a good tip on my brush, just do a fine line like so. And if you want you can use this for an even more extreme highlight on the flesh areas just on tiny little dots here and there. And as always thin it out with a little bit of water to give you as much control as possible. And with that, that is for brown flesh complete. So, lastly we have the pale skin flesh tone. And that says to start with grey sear, which is we already have as a primer. So then we go straight into a Reikland flesh shade wash. And for now, just this touch. And then just apply it all over. So yeah, just apply it all over the flesh areas, like so. So once that's dry, I'm going to take some pallid witch flesh, I'm going to thin it down as always, and then I'm going to be layering this over the, all the higher points. So just leave them, if I get a good tip on what this brush is playing up today, just leave it in the recesses and just whack around all the higher points. So just take your time with it and whack around a miniature. So, next up we're going to get the Screamer Pink back out, do what we've done with the first miniature, and just paint the areas around all the scars, thin out a little bit, oh, no. oh this brush, next video I promise I'll have a bit of a better brush. Yeah, just paint the area around all the scars with this colour. There's quite a few on the, this particular miniature as well. And lastly, I'm going to take some white scar, and this is going to be for highlighting all the scars very carefully like so and I'm also going to use it to do a few little highlights on the skin as well so more sort of raised areas to do little spots and such And once you've done that, the pale skin is done as well. So, here we have the finished miniatures, and I'm completely painted, starting with the first one I've done with the greeny skin. So, I think this is probably my favourite of the three schemes. Now, it's sort of different to your normal sort of skin tones that you'd paint on other miniatures. And yes, yeah, I really like it, I think this came out quite well, and the recipe certainly works really well at this standard. So moving on to the darker skin tone, and yeah, it works really well for um, a darker skin tone. So if you're looking to do to do a dark skin tone on your miniatures, then this recipe certainly 
works really well for that. And I think the scars really contrast really well with it as well. So yeah, again, very happy how that one's turned out. And then finally, uh, the sort of pale skin. Um, you can see there's quite a lot of contrast there between the lighter and the darker areas. I think maybe the flesh wash shade probably should have been thinned out and so there won't be as much contrast. But of course you can always do smoother blends and stuff like that when you build up your layers. Um, again, just going with the tabletop sort of standard there. But overall I think it looks quite good and I do quite like the more contrast on stuff. So yeah, I hope you have enjoyed watching this video and I hope it has been useful for you. And if you have enjoyed it, then please do give it a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe to our channel. And I'll see you all again in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. You can also click that bell icon to be notified when a new video has gone live on this channel. On the screen now are two more videos that you may wish to check out and a link to our Patreon page also. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon.